1869, Henri Milne Edwards of France received a heavy case full of animal hides and plant specimens. One plant specimen in particular caught his eye. The leaves were about the same size as mulberry leaves with serrated edges. The dark red flowers were partially enclosed by white bracts resembling wings. Milne Edwards was an experienced taxonomist and director of research at the National Museum of Natural History in Paris. But he'd never before seen a plant even similar to this one. suspected it was a new species. After waiting so long for such an opportunity, he was overjoyed. These specimens were sent by Father Armand David from faraway China. David loved the natural sciences and believed that learning about nature brought him closer to God. exploration and studying nature in the mountainous area where he was born. He often went up into the mountains to observe the wild flora and fauna and collected specimens. The mid-19th century was a golden age for the development of biology. As a result of the expansion of the known world, advances in biology, and the development of Europe's overseas colonies, more and more new species were discovered. The mysterious land of China attracted a stream of foreign adventurers. Father David was one of those adventurers. In 1852, at the age of 26, David applied to the church to proselytize in China. The combination of biological research and preaching perfectly suited him. But it took 10 years for his application to be approved. In February 1862, David visited Professor Milne Edwards before at last leaving for China. Milne Edwards greatly appreciated David's knowledge of animals and plants, so he asked him to look for new species in China. No one imagined that this obscure priest would discover David's deer, the giant panda, and the golden monkey during his time in China. These discoveries completely altered the world's concept of biology. finally arrived at a small church in a small county in southwestern China. He spent his spare time observing the local fauna and flora. The mountains and valleys are covered with ancient forests. The tall trees and complex ecological systems provided the exact kind of biodiversity he had been searching for all his life. On March 
March 17, 1869, David and his assistant took their usual walk into the mountains at daybreak. David decided to explore a valley he had yet to visit, hoping to make some new discoveries. In his diary, he wrote that he and his assistant left the church and headed for an unexplored valley in the mountains. The narrow path abruptly stopped just before noon. A heavy fog blocked the sun in the afternoon and they became lost. They walked around for a long time, searching for a way out of the valley. They decided to take a rest and try to find a way out when the fog cleared. Suddenly, he notices a kind of tree he's never seen before. It's nearly 20 meters tall and very leafy, with a straight trunk. Its leaves are oval, and its dark red flowers are protected by two large white bracts. They look like doves flapping their wings when the wind blows. David is surprised. He's seen many different species of plants, including some new ones, and can usually tell something about their taxonomy. But this tree is nothing like anything he's ever seen before, leading him to believe it may be a very rare species. his assistant tear off a branch for further study at home. Several months later, David packs all the precious animal hides and plant specimens he has collected in China into a large case to send to Professor Milne Edwards in Paris. The collection includes a specimen from the unique tree. David mentions this tree in his letter to Professor Milne Edwards, speculating that it is probably an ancient and rare species. He calls it the Chinese dove tree because of the appearance of its flowers. Milne Edwards begins studying the unusual tree specimen as soon as he opens the case. In searching for written references, he soon notices that it is similar to a fossil of a deciduous tree unearthed in Europe from the Cenozoic era that was thought to be long extinct. This would make the Chinese dove tree a living fossil. For his contribution to science in discovering the tree, it was assigned the Latin scientific name Davidia involucrata. at the time made it impossible to cultivate the tree in Europe. 
so Europeans only knew about it from pictures. With the passage of time, most people came to believe that the Chinese dove tree was just a legend. But several decades later, the plant unexpectedly came to the world's attention once again. In 1888, a French botanist organized David's specimens and published a book on them. The only color illustration shows the dove tree. The tree was a hit with the readers, as well as plant dealers from all over the world. The British Veitch Nurseries plans to introduce the tree to Europe. They quickly find someone willing to bring back seeds from China, 23-year-old Ernst Henry Wilson. the son of a railway worker who had developed a strong interest in plants at the age of 13. Later, he worked at the Royal Botanical Gardens in Kew, London. Kew Gardens has many Chinese plants and Oriental-style buildings. This may have been what piqued Wilson's interest in China. Wilson set off on his legendary journey to the east. He worried about finding the tree because he only had an illustration from an old botany book to go by. Locating the trees in the mountains was sure to be difficult. Wilson visited Augustine Henry, a Scotsman living in Yunnan, who provided him with a critical lead in the form of a map showing locations where Henry had seen dove trees. Armed with a map, Wilson boarded a boat for Yi Chung, where he organized a team to help him look for the trees. Wilson finally found a dove tree on May 19th. So happy and excited, he couldn't help but shout. Life in the mountains is very hard and tedious, but this didn't bother Wilson at all. He indulged himself in this kingdom of plants, collecting specimens and recording them in detail. His efforts have never been equaled by any subsequent Western explorers. This has led to him being given the title, the man who opened China's Western Garden. In 1902, Wilson set out on the return journey to Britain with the seeds of the dove tree safely packed away. He hoped that more and more people would learn to appreciate the tree in their own gardens and that every street in Europe would be decorated with its white and pure flowers. Months later, he began to plant the tree in Europe. Another 
problem appeared almost immediately. The seeds he had brought back from China didn't sprout. Splitting open the seeds revealed that the seeds of the dove tree are protected by a thick, hard shell that tightly covers them. After a long wait, some of the seeds finally sprouted. Wilson returned to China four more times to collect more plants. Over the years, he introduced more than 1,000 different Chinese plants to Europe. It was almost like a revolution in Western horticulture. He also took over 1,000 photos and wrote a great deal in his journals describing the plants. In 1929, Wilson published China, Mother of Gardens. The book had a far-reaching impact on 20th century horticulture. China became widely recognized as the mother of all gardens in Western horticulture. Wilson and other botanists, the dove tree thrived in Europe. Beach nurseries distributed the trees in many European countries as well as continental USA. Dove trees, a symbol of peace, were planted in both yards and public places where they were hugely popular. ancient castles, private homes, government offices, and hotels. There's even a large dove tree in the garden of the U.S. White House. Chen Wei Lie, professor at the Chinese Academy of Science, has many pictures of precious plants he's taken in Europe and the U.S. He was particularly impressed by all the Chinese dove trees he saw overseas. This exotic Chinese tree has taken root in other lands. But for a long time, it was largely unknown in its homeland. It finally came to the attention of the Chinese people by chance. In April 1954, the late Premier Zhou Enlai participated in an international meeting in Geneva. He was intrigued by several beautiful trees with white flowers that looked like doves in flight. From one of the surprised foreign personnel accompanying him, he learned that they were Chinese dove trees that came from southwest China. They are living fossils that have survived millions of years and the fourth ice age.
Premier Zhou remembered the tree when he returned to China. He realized that the tree was worth serious study, so he ordered the Ministry of Forestry to carry out research on it. The Ministry of Forestry immediately assigned research tasks to local agencies in southwest China. The legendary Chinese tree becomes popular in the West, but remains unknown in its homeland. Finding this exotic living fossil in the dense mountain forests was a daunting task. Now botanists hope that the tree can beautify Chinese cities. Please join us for part two of the ancient dove tree.